muss ich. You'll be hearing from us. From the strategic homeland and just call us. My shield. user has information that could well could make this free system. Hulk. <sighs> Smash. And here we go. And greetings, all of our fellow geek listeners. Happy Avengers Week <laughs> is how I'd like to greet That's everyone. That's right. My name is BJ. I am Big Rich. And this is Geek Show, episode 16. And uh, thank you so much for listening to us, no matter how you found us. If it was on iTunes, if it was on Stitcher, yep. if it was on Podcastpedia, Blueberry, if you found us over on MoviePilot.com, um, just thank you. We're uh, very happy to have you along, and uh, we we love having you around for the ride. And uh, we're yeah. ready to get into this next episode. We for got you. a ton of stuff. To talk and, I, about. and I apologize in advance if I sound stuffy or scratchy at all. It has been a, a weird crazy week for me i think i have allergies <laughs> like i i don't know like you know i had to skip one week because i had strep throat and then i was fine yeah because we recorded the last show and then i wake up last week and all of a sudden the weather switched on us here in upstate <laughs> new york and i'm um, stuffed up and congested so there's i don't a, know there's a saying in upstate new york if you don't like the weather wait 10 minutes it'll change yeah exactly so i apologize in advance if i sound uh if i sound a little congested yeah so i mean i think you sound fine i mean right I hear the raspiness a little bit, but right. nothing that a Zyrtec couldn't fix. <laughs> right. Yeah, I yeah. just have to go buy those. Do we do we do we get money for saying Zyrtec on the air? Let's try. Okay. <laughs> Zyrtec. Use Zyrtec. I love it. I put <laughs> make, it in my coffee. It makes you feel good. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Uh all right. So uh, Seriously though, Zyrtec, send us some money. Yeah, send us some money. And some Zyrtec. <laughs> and some Zyrtec, because my wife would love you. I don't have I don't have to worry about allergies, my wife does. You never know when they'll kick in. You I know. never had allergies, and all of a sudden now it's just like boom. As I'm getting older, maybe I don't yeah. know. Yeah. All right, so a um, lot of stuff to talk about. Um, let, let, I mean, we're just going to jump right into the lots of Spider-Man news has been coming. There out. has been quite a bit of Spider-Man news. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you saw last week. Um, Robert Downey Jr. was actually on David Letterman. I missed that, and he uh, he didn't say much, but he teased the fact that uh, you know Dave asked him. Uh, you know, about Civil War and everything, and he said, you know, it's basically you versus, you know, Captain America in it. Yeah. And he said, yeah, and he goes, and then there's, you know, a bunch of others, other Avengers in it, because kidding aside, everybody's kind of calling it Captain America Civil War Avengers 2.5. Yeah. Because it's going to have, I mean, they're confirming so many different people yep. are going to be in this movie, yep. which it has to be. I, I like how they've actually you know? taken Captain America. I mean, the first movie was very... Uh, you know, it was his origin story. Yeah. But now it's going towards that political thriller kind of thing. Right. You know, Winter Soldier was that way. And now. Well, I mean, the Russo brothers have just done such a fantastic yeah. job with it, you know. So, I mean, let them go and do whatever they want to do, because I think that they're going to they're going to point us in the right direction and take comic book movies in a, in a yes. whole different in a whole different way. Oh, but yeah. When uh, when RDJ was on uh, when he was on David Letterman, Letterman also asked him, he said, oh, and uh, Spider-Man is going to be in this film, too. And Robert Downey Jr. said he may pop up. So he kind of teased it. I think that they're downplaying a little, a little bit uh -huh. as far as Spider-Man's role in Civil War. Right. Um, because there is also another rumor floating out there that part of the deal with Sony is that Spider-Man can be in Civil War, but it's just going to be a small cameo rather than a large role. I think, yeah, maybe so, because, because, I mean, he was actually the very, he was the focal point of the start of the Civil War in the right, comics. exactly. It was, you know, it was... I mean, Tony Stark had basically taken Peter under his wing. Peter had been going through a lot of stuff, um, you know, in re in that regards. Uh, so he ended up moving into Avengers Tower mm -hmm. with MJ and Aunt May. Right. And then Aunt May kind of hooked up with Jarvis, <laughs> which I thought was quite interesting. It'd be interesting if they did that in the movie world yeah. since he's an AI. <laughs> yeah. So, and then... Um, you know, and then there was that whole thing with uh, with the kingpin uh, shooting Aunt May once Peter's right, once identity came out. Exactly. And Peter went off the rails. Right. And then the whole time. I mean, it just it, the Spider-Man was a catalyst for not only Civil War, but for a lot of different things going forward in the Marvel Universe. So um, I can understand why he wouldn't be in Civil War, per se, yeah. in that regard with Sony, the deal with Sony, because right. he's going to have his own movie. Which may I don't know maybe we'll we'll see flashbacks well, or it'll touch on that kind of stuff in Civil sp War. Speaking of that new of that 
of that own movie with Sony, which is going to be really heavily influenced by Kevin Feige and the team at Marvel. Right. Um, that will be in theaters by 2017. So we're going to have another Spider-Man movie by 2017. And right now there's rumors all over the internet. Right. And it's just rumors. Just rumors. But the working title for the film is Spider-Man The New Avenger, which could work. The title, to me, does I mean... <laughs> It's. I mean, it, he was a part of the Avengers. I mean, it's Cap- Captain America, the first Avenger. You know, I don't call it that. I call it Captain America. But Spider Man, the new Avenger. If I they're want, going with like a subtitle, I guess. Well, I mean, maybe. Well, I mean, they've said they want to switch up the Avengers, like they right. do in the comics. Yeah. And Spider Man was an Avenger for a short while. Right. So maybe this might. I mean, it be could be that. It could work. It's a working title right yeah. now, um, according to the rumors and everything. But I think the biggest, the biggest thing that has to do with Spider-Man and the things that you have been saying all along, and a lot of people have been saying, is it has to be Peter Parker. And we touched on this a little bit last show, but didn't really hit on it. But it has been confirmed. It will be Peter. Parker. It will Parker. be Peter. Yeah. Hallelujah, huzzah! Exactly. And it's going to be high school age Peter. Yes. So, Even better. Right. So it's going to be dealing with some of the things that Spider-Man with acne. Yeah, right, exactly. You know, anybody who watch if you um if you happen to watch uh Ultimate Spider Man that's on yep. uh Dis- on the Disney channel. My daughter watches that. I, I caught a few episodes. It's it's not terrible. It's yeah. very it's very geared towards kids and yeah. everything, but it's it's that kind of aspect of Spider Man that I think that the MCU is gonna right. hit on is like dealing with him in high school right. and transitioning into becoming a hero. If you if you've never seen uh if you've never seen the cartoon and you try to watch the cartoon, a yeah. uh, bit of advice, uh, take some ADHD pills yeah. or have a translator handy because, right. I mean, it's jumping from left to right. And well, you know, he, he he's very Deadpool on that show. He he's is very Deadpool. He's constantly breaking the fourth wall. Yeah. He's he's busting out the jokes. He's, he's looking at the camera. And... But, it's a fun, but it's a fun teenage Spider-Man yeah. that I think that, is what people got people interested in Spider Man in the first yeah. place when he was introduced in the comics back in the nineteen sixties. Yeah. And 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 I have to I have to hand it to Marvel for I mean, it is a well animated show. Uh I do like it. And, and it's it, completely tied into the MCU. Yeah, you see Agent Colson. Right. I mean, and Clark Gregg is right. actually the voice of Colson in and, the cartoon. You know, and Nick Fury is in there. Yeah. And uh, some of the more interesting parts is like, you know, like Iron Fist is in there and Nova yeah. and uh, Luke Cage, but they're all younger versions of themselves. Right. They'll have the, the versions of that we're seeing that you see on that animated show are going to be nothing like what they're going to be having. Yes. Um, Thank within you. the within the Netflix Thank universe, God. because I mean that's yeah that's just but it's like we said it's it's geared more towards kids, yeah. which is that's perfect because you yeah. know yes superheroes they are designed like in all intents and purposes they are designed for for younger children right. and everything, but also they're for us. <laughs> yeah, that's true, you know? and I, I and I wanted to thank uh, Marvel for doing that because it's actually brought the inner geek of my daughter, my thirteen year old daughter Terry has finally embraced her geek. <laughs> she was into Transformers, but she liked the Prime and all those others. I was like, nah, the real yeah. Transformers are Generation 1. My Transformers. <laughs> Generation, Generation 1. Generation 1, all right? Yeah, right. that's the, you know, Rodimus Prime and all that. You know, before they killed off Jazz. Or remember in, in remember in the Transformers movie yeah. when they killed Optimus Prime? Oh, geez. And it was like, What? See now, yeah, I know, and and it was kind of a punk way that they killed him off. Yeah, really, really. I mean, just to kind of sidetrack real quick in the comic books, when Marvel, you know, I don't, I don't know who the writer was for the Transformer comics when it was with Marvel. I don't know who killed off Optimus Prime, but the way they kind of brought him back was really cool. You base basically they went searching for Optimus Prime's head, which was tied into all this different circuitry and that. So Optimus was technically still alive, but when yeah. they put him back together, he was completely different. He, his personality had changed. Right. So, but that's the kind of storytelling that I'm used to. But still, uh, it's all good. Uh, just a quick note on the Transformers thing. They have confirmed that they're putting out another one, and it's some <sighs> uh, joined universe within this Hasbro universe that they have. Yeah. So the only other movie I believe that Hasbro is doing anything with is G.I. Joe. So are we going to see Transformers and G.I. Joe's together? I, I, I don't know. Well, I mean... That's the, totally for another show to go down that yeah, crazy road. Yeah, all I'll but. say is the Marvel version of that was awesome. Let, but yeah. that's definitely well, it, and maybe Marvel is gonna work with them on it. You never know. I don't. It, I don't think you're gonna get well, Michael Bay out of the picture. But Michael Bay has nothing to do with GI Joe. 
Did like, you see the first G.I. Joe? I saw the very first G.I. Ugh, terrible. Terrible. Horrible. Hated it. I, that yeah. second G.I. Joe that had the rock in it yeah. was not bad. Nope. Not it bad at not all. Not bad at all. Not bad at all. And Ray Park, the fact they got Ray Park back as Snake Eyes, yeah. right there. You know, Darth Maul and Snake Eyes. That, right. that, 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 he could live off that resume alone. Absolutely. Love Ray Park as Snake Eyes. So. Okay. All right. But we're, we got way, yeah, let's, we yeah, got way, way off of that. We're way sidetracked. <laughs> way sidetracked. Back on, back on the rails. Okay. So anyway, we're talking about Spider-Man and how it's you know very important that it is the high school age Peter Parker. Yes. Because I feel like that is the kind of Peter Parker that Tony Stark and Steve Rogers are going to be trying to uh, to influence. Right. A young, so. impressionable Peter Parker. Yeah. Drawn, you know, And like I was saying way before, Tony took Peter in the comics under his wing and convinced Peter that, you know, he had to come out. This was the way to go. Right. So, and didn't end so well for Peter. Right, yeah. That's so. very, very true. Yeah, and I mean, but then we all know what also happened to, yeah, to and, Steve. I mean. Right, and then, you know, in, in the comic books too, I mean, well, on the ultimate side, uh, Peter Parker is is dead, but Marvel is trying to group everything together within the Secret War story that's coming out, I believe, yeah. And in less than a week, Secret Wars comes out as far as the comic book universe goes, where the Ultimate Universe battles the 616 universe, and then whatever is left at the end of that, that is the entire Marvel universe. There is no more Ultimates. There is no more 616. It's just one universe. So, I mean, I don't know if we're going to see, you know, is it is Peter Parker going to fight Miles Morales or something like that? Right. But, you know, they're trying to make these comics match up to the MCU. They're doing a good job of doing that. That would be awesome so, if they were to basically just, yeah, just have everything as one con- continuity. So, right. yep, you got the movies. You got this Avenger movie, but then you get to see all the stuff that happens after right. that. You know, like after New York, it's all in the comic books and all that. And then, you know, Avengers Age of Ultron, here's Ultron. And then oh, the aftermath of rebuilding after Ultron's defeated. Because, I mean, come on. Right. You, you know he's going to be defeated. Yeah. It's the Avengers. That's a, yeah. I don't I'm know. Not if spoiling he'll, anything. I don't think that he'll be ultimately defeated. Like yeah, the we may end see him game. come back. Well, man, I'm just thinking like from di- some different like theories and rumors that I've so- seen online is that you know Infinity Wars is going to contain way more than just one villain, which everybody knows is going to be Thanos. Yes, because it's got it's got to be. I mean, this is going to be some gigantic event, right? So, and I mean, and I read online too, Charlie Cox. Uh, who plays Matt Murdock in Daredevil is contracted to do MCU movies. Really? Right. So oh. he is contracted to be in these movies. So oh, we're sad. will he show up in Civil War? It's possible. Will he they show up him? in Infinity yeah. War? It's oh, that's also possible. Yeah. So I mean the They're going they're going in the really in a really cool direction. Yeah. And I think that it all hinges upon how well they are able to get this Spider Man uh character Finally translated on right. film the way we want to see. It. I I have faith in Marvel. I have right. faith. I have yet to be. I, I mean, there I, there really isn't anything that Marvel's done yet that has let me down. Right. Uh, you know, overwhelmingly, where I felt like I've lost all hope in Marvel. Well, I think that. Um, and I had passed the article on to you, but there was this really, and it was because of some more leaks at Sony with emails and everything. But there were some leaks that came out that showed. Um, some of the notes that Kevin Feige, Feige sent right. to Sony exactly. for the last Spider-Man movie. Right. And a lot of them were just completely ignored by Sony. Well, a lot of them were some of the complaints that us as fans of Spider-Man and, right. you know, and, and the MCU and stuff had said was one of the things that we didn't like about the movie. You know, yeah. uh, one exactly. of the big things that Kevin Feige didn't like was Andrew Garfield's perform- performance overall. It, it was, was too all over the place. Right. It was just scattered. Yeah. So, I mean, they wanted that, him to rein that in a little bit. I mean, and Andrew Garfield didn't do himself any favors. He kind of, you know, bashed uh, Sony for their distribution of the movie and their public and their, uh, uh, bleh, what am I trying to say? Marketing of the movie. Right. Um. So he's out. So Andrew Garfield is out. If you enjoyed him in these two Spider-Man films, he's done. Just like if you enjoyed Tobey Maguire in the first three. Right. Like it's that's done too. Like right. Marvel is getting the reins now. Sony is Thank putting up the money, God. and it's gonna be it's gonna Thank be God. much much different. Yeah. Um, but they have narrowed it down uh, with the work along with the working title of Sp- Spider Man: The New Avenger. They've narrowed it down to five actors. To, yeah, 
Now, I don't know if Marvel is actually looking at this, but this is all according to some pretty credible sources online that work within the industry. So the first one that they're uh, narrowed it down to, and these, you're going to find all these guys that are in common are in their very early 20s. They're young actors. Right, They've now, not done a whole lot. Now, just 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 make me feel better. Yeah. Justin Bieber is not on this no, list. No, Justin Bieber is not Thank on the God. list. God. But he's not a proven actor, so. <laughs> he's we not can't. a proven singer either. Exactly. <laughs> But they're all very young actors. They've all done very little things, but they've done some. Uh, they've had some notable works. Uh, the first one is uh, Timothy um, Chalamet. I think that's how you pronounce his name, and he was in uh, Interstellar along with uh, Matthew McConaughey. So that Chris Nolan space. Film. Okay. Um, so he was in that, and then uh, I think it's uh, Asa or Asa Butterfield. Asa. He was, uh, he was in Under's Game. Um, oh yeah, 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 yeah. He was good, right? Exactly. He was you know, really he good. wouldn't be bad at pulling off the Peter Parker role, right? Um, and then as the list goes on, on uh, Nat Wolf, who played, um, who was one of the players in uh, the Fault in Our Stars. Um, if you saw that movie, he was the one who uh, had the, who ended up going blind because he had some disease with his eyes and everything. Mm -hmm. He was very funny in that film, for as depressing as that movie was. Um, I thought he did a really good job in it. Um, I could see him playing Peter Parker really, really well. Um, Tom Holland from the movie The Impossible is also on there. And Liam James, who played um, John Cusack's son in 2012. And he also played young Sean on Psych, or one of the young Seans on Psych. They kind of switched it up a little bit. But he is also in the works. And like I said, these guys are all young. They're all, like, not unknown, but relatively unknown. Yeah. So I think that there's possibility all. Now, I mean, there were some previous rumors uh, that Dylan O'Brien from The Maze Runner and Teen Wolf uh, was going to be cast as Spider-Man. Right. Uh, but his name is not on that list right now. Um, and then Ansel Elgort, who was also in The Fault in Our Stars, played one of the title characters, and it was in the, Diver in the Divergent movies, um, was also up for the role, but he confirmed that he's not been approached by uh, anyone right. about the role. So... I mean, those were all just rumors, but the the those five names that I gave you, those those names, um, those are, you know, supposedly in the running for Peter Parker. Mm. I, I like, I mean, I like the list. Asa, it, I mean, he was great in in Ender's Game. I haven't seen the other movies, right? Um, so I can't speak to them. But... I feel like I've like I have not like uh, lived up to my geek cred by not seeing Interstellar, but everything that I've read about Interstellar. Suggests that maybe I shouldn't see it. <laughs> well, I've I've seen Interstellar, but I was mean, it okay? It was okay. Um, I mean, it, it didn't like was overwhelm me. Was McConaughey believable as an astronaut? Uh, That's my biggest concern. He was pretty good. I think he was pretty good. He was more believable in that mashup with the Star Wars trailer, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> where he's crying. Uh, my my level of believability of astronauts is set high at Tom Hanks in Apollo 13. Yes. Like, that is my that, bar for actors have, portraying astronauts. I have watched Apollo 13 I don't know how many times. There was yeah. When ABC Family had Apollo 13 and they were showing it, like, every other weekend, yeah. I watched it every time. I loved that movie. Oh, great movie. Kevin Bacon, uh, uh, Bill Paxton, yep. uh, Tom Hanks, all fantastic as the crew of Apollo 13. Yeah. Oh, I love that movie. And then, you know, because, I mean, some of the other actors that have played astronauts, just to yeah. me, you know, like you know, Mark Wahlberg and uh, Planet of the Apes. Oh, God. And everything. Like, I, just, oh, I don't know. Is... I, unless Mark Wahlberg is playing some sort of tough guy, I am just I just have a he really does, hard it, time yeah, believing Yeah, I it. didn't really get into that. You know, in that most recent Transformers movie, not to go back to Transformers, but he was supposed to be some, like, gadgety scientist. But, God, it was just so unbelievable. I just, yeah, I mean. You know? I mean, the only, the only part about that movie that I really liked was, you know, they finally got Optimus right, you know, as a Mack truck. That's right, about it. Right, 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 yeah. So, but what are you going to do? The Dinobots were kind of cool, but I, yeah. it was kind of... Well, we don't need to talk about Transformers. Yeah, we don't need to talk How about... How are we going off on another... This is the second this, Transformers this second... tangent. So we should have an anti-Michael Bay <laughs> episode, I think, maybe. Right, right. But except still. Except for Con Air and... Uh, did he do Con Air? I think he did I Con know. Air. I, I'm, I'm, it I seems like, like his Air. kind of movie. I'll, I like Con Air and I like Armageddon. You know? Yeah, Armageddon was... It's one of those ones yeah. where I'll turn it on. You know... But, but then again, that's another astronaut movie. Bruce Willis and crew, like well, they technically Clark weren't Dunkley, astronauts, but you know. Ben Affleck. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I guess not. 
Yeah. As as sort of kind of astronauts, they were okay. <laughs> I mean, the way they portrayed. All right, well, you know, it's a tangent. Let's get off of it. All right, um, but yeah. So about this whole Spider-Man thing, um, the cam the the rumor is that it could just be a cameo in Civil War, and then the new movie, the rebooted movie, will be in theaters by 2017. So my question is, where how do they handle that from there? Because um, when you think about the first set of Spider-Man movies. And then the next set of Spider-Man movies, you've already, they've explored so many villains. Yeah. Who is the villain? What is the fresh take that Marvel can give on this? And what is the fresh villain that they can unleash? Because I, I'm over anything that has to do with the Green Goblin. I am over it. Yeah. I thought that, uh, I thought that it was pretty well done in the first movie. Right. Um, and, uh, I thought it was very poorly done in these most recent movies where, you know, he just, uh, you know, Harry Osborn just kind of becomes the green goblin because of some weirdo disease that's genetic and it's like, get out of here with that nonsense. But, uh, I mean, over, (laughs) I mean, overall, I'm just over the green goblin. Yes. I realize that it's Spider-Man's like big nemesis and everything. Right. But there's so many other ones that they could have done. Um, I thought that some of the notes from Feige about Electro were pretty good. Right. He loved the way that they portrayed Electro in the movie. They hate, he hated the way that he was portrayed before Electro. Right. In the movie. You know, they said it made it, you know, they made him seem like a, like a crazy stalker obsessed right. person. And that's not who Electro is. Right. You know, so, you know, what's his real game plan there? So, I mean, maybe Electro is a, is some place they can go down. Uh, one of the notes that I really liked was that they said they needed to tone down the Rhino as oh, it seems so yes. cartoonish, and yes. I agree a hundred percent with that. Oh my God, Paul Giamatti was just over the top with that right junk, way over the I top. Mean, and I like him; I think he's a great actor, but that was just way too much. It was like he was a psychotic idiot. Well, if there is if they're reestablishing Spider Man, I think that you have to reestablish him. Uh, reestablish him with a villain that is not as giant, I think, as the Green Goblin and Norman Osborn. You know, I was just, I, I've been thinking about that for the last couple minutes. What about Mysterio? You could do Mysterio. Mysterio would have a lot of cool aspects to it just because, you know, yeah. here's a, you know, a movie special effects guy right. that decides that, you know, I could make more money by stealing. Right. You know, or... Uh, or somebody like the Shocker. Shocker would be good. Right? Because that's somebody, I mean. As long as they don't give him that weird suit, that the, weird quilted suit. The quilted suit. suit? God, no. <laughs> Why not? Because, you know. Yeah. <laughs> let's, not, let's not get back into that Wolverine costume thing. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. So, all right. So, I mean, there's definitely ways that they can go. I don't know which way Marvel will go. Because when you think about, like, I mean, Captain America has one huge villain, and that's Red right. Skull. And they, they kind of tackled him. Right. I think for Infinity War, they're going to end up bringing Red Skull back. That might be You know be what cool. I mean? Yeah. So, I mean, maybe if they get Spider-Man involved in this universe, maybe they do roll out somebody bigger, you know? What, what, if, if, what about they bring back D'Onofrio for, for Kingpin? I mean, they could also use, they could use him. Because that was a big thing with, I mean, when he when Kingpin was rolling, yeah. I mean, it was big time, man. I mean, he had his fingers. I mean, you saw him. He was right. in Daredevil Comics. He was in Spider-Man. Well, I mean, I would love it, and I'm going to go back to, like, that 90s Spider-Man, the animated show. Right. Um, where they had Kingpin working with uh, Alistair Smythe. Yeah. And I thought that that was kind of a cool way to go with the spider slayers and everything. Yeah, yeah. They could go a route like that because then it's like, you know, okay, Kingpin is, say he gets out of prison. Right. Because he gets put in prison at the end of Daredevil. Right. He gets out. He's reestablishing himself. You know, maybe he's got Daredevil in check or Daredevil's no longer concerned because now he's going after more of the Manhattan right. area. So now he's got to deal with Spider-Man. And his way of getting rid of him is by, you know, working with this scientist to design the Spider Slayers right. or something like that. So that could be a, a way that you could go in that too. I mean, well, I say I'm over the Green Goblin. I mean, Hobgoblin is is an aspect that they yeah. can go with too. Um I don't know. I I just uh, they could bring back Doctor Octopus. They you know if they went with a a, a Doctor Octopus like uh that's 
because I think that they did a really good job with Doc Ock and yeah. Spider Man too. So they could totally bring back Doctor Octopus. That could work well because right. then that's just another, you know, scientist that you know gains these abilities somehow. Right. But the the possibilities are endless. I don't think that they'll go the route of Venom. No. But I don't know if that whole Sinister Six movie is still in the works at Sony either. I haven't I think, heard any people. About yeah, that. I think maybe that might be on the back burner until they see how Marvel right comes out with this, so they can figure out if that's something they really want to do or not. Right. Um, I would just like to see Venom really well done on screen. Yeah, like the Venom from like the Todd McFarlane years at Marvel right. is how I would like to see it done on screen. Right. Um, and you know what would be cool is if Spider Man's big task at his rebooted version was taking on. Uh, Venom and maybe even Carnage, but I think that if you bring Carnage in, that movie's got to be rated R. <laughs> yeah, Carnage you was get... violent. Yeah, violent. Yeah, then so. you're getting into that kind of stuff. And plus, I mean, I I really didn't like the way they portrayed Venom in that in Spider-Man Three. In the Topher oh Man. no, I don't think it was horrible. Did. Yeah, Topher Grace. I mean, he's a good actor. They never should have tapped him. Eddie Bro- Eddie Brock is is a meathead. I mean, yeah. you know, he's a meathead bound on getting revenge. Yeah. So I mean, you can't just have he, him. He always be... worked out. He was, I mean, he was already a big dude, right? You know, he was like, you know, very buff. Which is why Venom was that big hulking character, right? Exactly. I so. mean, if anything, Topher Grace, I think, probably would have made a better Carnage, because I mean, Carnage was more of a, right. a smaller, and I think that would have been a real good stretch for Topher I in mean, regards to you know what being if it's a bad guy. What if it's even just the, the to the effect of like Spider Man has to bring down. A criminal, and that criminal is Cletus Cassidy, or something like that. Right. And then Cletus Cassidy gets put into prison, and all of a sudden he's exposed to to the Carnage symbiote. I mean, and that could set something up further. Right. So I'm the the way that Marvel and Sony could go with this one, it has to be a fresh take. Yeah. Please don't do another Green Goblin. God. Like just yeah. please don't do another one because it maybe was, maybe hint that he was already yeah. taken care of. Right, exactly. That, that, I mean, yeah, he exists, but you know what? Spider-Man already took care of, of uh, you know, Norman Osborn. He's, you know, doing his thing and, and, and that kind of, you know. I mean, you could even go the way, though. You could go the Vulture. I mean, there's just... Vulture, there's Tombstone. Spider-Man, right. Sp- Spider-Man's rogues gallery is so vast that we don't need to see another incantation of the same exact villain. Right. We don't, I don't need to see Sandman again, either. Like, it, like we're good yeah. with that. Like, we don't need to see Sandman again. So I don't know. I mean, there's there's just tons of 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 things to pull from. Right. So let's. I mean, I I would hope for. I I'm kind of hoping for something that involves the kingpin, you know, something the kingpin is manipulating and he hires somebody out or right. or something or teams up with somebody. The Alistair Smythe with the Spider Slayer. I think that's a good angle. Right. Um. But even if you know we see, even if we see some one of his other major ones, Doc Ock would be. You know, would be great. That's you know a really great nod, and then or even um, you know Vulture, uh, right. Shocker. I'm not as big on right, but I mean I'll still I, I wouldn't mind seeing him as long as they don't introduce us to a million villains like they seem to do in all these Spider-Man oh, movies. Oh God, yes. Just give us one thing that he has Just to fight. One guy, you know? that focuses his attention. I mean, if you want to, if you want a cameo of one other minor villain, right? Fine. That's cool. Set it up maybe as something else. Oh yeah, set it up. Like if they, so, they established Doc Ock for us. Doc Ock. His whole thing in the comic books was he was sick of being right. defeated by Spider Man. So he goes out and says, "I'm going to get six more villains on my side to try and bring down Spider Man." Right. Which is the first incantation of the Sinister Six. Right. And you know, so maybe they end up setting that up for like a Phase Four. Right. Or something Some, like that. Something along those lines. I mean, set right. or or do it as like you know maybe one of those tag scenes. Where, you know, you see Ock, you know, walk up on somebody right. and say, hey, I got a deal for you. And it's, oh, my God, it's the Vulture. You know, that kind right. of Maybe thing. he's in prison. Yeah. And there's somebody else that's been put in prison by Spider-Man. Right. Exactly. And then maybe, or or perhaps they go the route of they need someone with some sort of, uh, you know, funds and ability and, you know, knowledge to yeah. help them get what they want to get. And maybe, you know... The kingpin then visits them right. in prison, and maybe the so, kingpin is the person who sets it right. up. Or they do bring in a Norman Osborn, or maybe or you know, like or maybe that. his fixer or something like that. Yeah, I mean, but that we just of. like I just I'm so over seeing 
a portrayal of the Green Goblin. We're done. With I it. thought Willem Dafoe did it really good in that first Spider-Man movie. Yeah. So I mean, there's. I mean, that's. I, I think it's been done. I think it's been done really well, and I think that's it. I would you be? I I think you know if they brought William back for like a Norman Osborn cameo, you know. Well, there is talks of them uh, bringing uh, what's his face back, the guy who played J Jonah Jameson. Oh, uh, 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 J.K. Uh, Simmons. Yeah, yeah. So there's talk of bringing he was good. him back. As, he was good. Oh, I thought he played J. Jonah Jameson perfectly. Yeah, and he does the voice of J. Jonah Jameson on the Ultimate Spider-Man cartoon. So it would be really cool if they were able to bring him back in some. That would be great. Form. That would be great. Because I, I would like him in that. Again. Take yeah, I take what worked in the other movies, bring him into the MCU and see how it works. Go right. from there. I mean. I, I, I would love to see J.K. Simmons right. back. And we got to see Mary Jane back, too. So. Oh, God, yeah. Like, I don't know, know about Kirsten Dunst. No, not Kirsten. She's too, if they were going for high school age, she's too old at yeah. this point. So. So they, oh, sorry, sorry. It's just how it is. It's just, yeah. You can't, can't, can't play 18 forever. No, you cannot. <laughs> so who, who, would they, who would they get for an MJ? I don't know. Um, to be honest, they're, they're probably going to go for a relatively unknown again. Oh, they, who, um, who's the girl that plays Sansa on oh, Game She's of- already playing Jean Grey. Oh, screw it. Sophie Turner. Damn it, Sophie. So, I mean, she's already Sophie. playing Jean Grey. Sophie, why? That's <laughs> that's why I was thinking of her, because she's... Right. So they ca- Well, they cast her as Jean Grey in X-Men Apocalypse, so yeah. she'll be in that one. Um, Off the top of my head, I really... um. I really have no idea who I can't I think see. of anybody myself. If you have an idea, send it to us. You know who they could play? Um, And you're probably... Your daughter would know her more than me. Um... Is that girl that's on the Disney Channel? Um, oh, I think I know who you her, mean. I, I can't I remember her name. name. I can't remember her name, but I know exactly who you mean. Oh God! All right, are you gonna look it up? I'm gonna look it up. All right, right you now. look it up while I vamp because basically, if you have an idea for uh, who should be MJ in the new Spider-Man movie, since they're going with a high school age uh, girl, uh, let us know. I mean, obviously, you can email us. Uh, you know, BJ at xjockalbanyny dot com or Big Rich at Be- Bella Thorne is who I Bella was thinking Thorne. of. There you go. Uh, I think that Bella Thorne might work well. You got you still got her picture up, so I can see it. Uh, no, I don't. No, okay. So I was gonna say if it's the right, I want to make sure it's the girl I'm thinking of too. But uh, also, yeah, I mean, you can also go to the website xjockalbanyny dot com. Uh, in the comments for this particular episode, please let us know what you think, uh, or I should say, who you think would make a better or make a good MJ for the new Spider-Man movies. I mean, do you think, well, what if they go with Gwen though? Yep. That's her. Yeah. I think that Bella Thorne would work well. Um, I don't think that I, I I just don't see him going with Gwen. I think they want to get back into that traditional Spider-Man universe that we're all used to. With MJ Um, and that. Yeah. And I think Gwen Stacy is, is done. So I think that they're going to, they need to reintroduce us to Mary Jane and they need to have her be, uh, the the focus of like his interests as yes. far as like love goes and things like that. I think so too. I mean, I, it's always been Peter and MJ. Right. I mean, know. Gwen Stacy was huge, a huge thing that happened in the comics with him. But Peter and MJ is you know that is as big as Lois and Clark. Right. And you know. Uh, and that was the other thing too. So, I think Stan Stan Lee had talked about this when they were going with with Gwen for Peter's love interest. And then they introduced MJ to be kind of like this counter to it to maybe put in a little more drama or something like that. And it ended up the fans liked MJ way more than Gwen because right. they developed MJ so much more. Right. So. Well, I mean, I thought when they did these initial new Spider-Man runs that Emma Emma Stone was going to play uh, Mary Jane. Yeah. She are, she She's had, already got red hair. Right, right. Which isn't her normal, which is not right. her natural color. So. I think blonde is her natural color as far as hair goes, so okay. I guess that's why they... I don't know. I don't know. I just always thought it was kind of weird because I always associated Emma Stone as a redhead yeah. and Kirsten Dunst as a blonde, Right. but then they flip-flopped it for right. the movie. It's like, really, guys? Yeah. Can we, like, you know, maybe fix that? Yeah, it is what it... I mean, Emma Stone is was a hot name and still is a hot name. Yeah. So, I mean, that explains a lot of the casting choice to me for that role. Um, but I think that if they were to if they were to recast, I think that they could go MJ and they need to go young again. Yeah. So that's how it is. All right. Well, I, I, and I think Bella Thorne would be a good fit. She can work. She she already looks it. She's got the red hair and everything. And that's... she already works for Disney. <laughs> right, right. So there you go. So there you go. So that, that works out pretty well. All right. What's so, What's next on our list of... 
of, uh, of geekery that we must talk about. Well, today. speaking of of uh, bringing back things and and getting control of things, there's something that Marvel doesn't have control of. But I may have changed my mind on how I feel a little bit. Um, that new Fantastic Four trailer came yeah. out. Yeah. And previously, from what we had seen and what we had heard, um, this movie was going to be nothing like what we were used to, mainly right. because it was based on Ultimate Fantastic Four, which right. is a Marvel property that I'm not familiar with, that you're not familiar with. Ultimate completely changed the uh, origin story of the Fantastic Four. They didn't get their powers because of cosmic rays. Right. They got their powers because of interdimensional travel between here and the negative zone, which is what they're exactly what they're going with in this new movie. Right. They're all a lot younger than they were. Uh, you know, you've got Michael B. Jordan as Johnny Storm. Jamie Bell is playing the Thing, which the first images of the Thing came out, and I don't, I don't hate it. it. Looks a little bit like a rock monster. Yeah, but I think that they have gotten it right to the point where the Thing is supposed to be colossal like not quite hulk size right. but almost hulk size yeah so i think that they've done a good job with that um and then you've got uh oh what's her what's her face um uh mark kate mara yeah as sue storm uh haven't seen much out of her uh sue storm is kind of you know just there yeah. for the most part she's got great power but you know we haven't really seen that portrayed very well on on screen yet correct yeah um and then miles teller as reed richards like the default leader of this group mm -hmm. you know who's one of the greatest minds in all of marvel comics history and everything it is you know i mean when you think about it now his his superpower to be able to stretch and bend his limbs like rubber and everything yeah. like that are kind of you know weird and and not exactly on par with what we would consider like a, some awesome ability right you know what i mean so but I, I think I changed my mind after watching this most recent trailer. Yeah, I remember which, you posted that on Facebook, yeah. Well, it sh it completely, it explores it a little bit more, which I thought was good. And if you want, the trailer is posted over at xjockalbanyny.com, so you can check it out if yeah. you haven't, but I'm sure if you're listening to this show, you've already seen it. Right. Um, my, my thoughts on it are, it doesn't look as bad as I thought it was going to look, I don't know if it's going to be a great film, but now, now I'm intrigued. Based, yeah. So now, so the first trailer really didn't grab you. Never no. grab. It didn't grab me. The first trailer, the first images, the first poster. It just, nothing. Yeah, it the was synopsis. just nothing there. Yeah, I mean, the synopsis was what turned me off completely. On right. pretty much, um, Doom is a blogger. What? Right. Which now, according to this new trailer, he's he may be, but it's much, much more than that, because they showed. Dr. Doom. Yeah. Because when they said, you have to be able to fight what's coming, and they said, what's coming? And then the, the voiceover just says, and whoever it is that's talking says, Doom. And then you get a look of Doom looking over right. his shoulder, the metal mask, yeah. the green hood. Yeah. Um, and from what I've been seeing and what I've been hearing online is like, he could have been a guy that was like part of like as a guest journalist right that was part of this controlled experiment right to go into the negative zone yeah and at the end when whatever happened happened he gets left behind Ooh. so he is stuck in the negative zone and is just getting all kinds of angry which you know the traditional dr doom story that we're used to is like he's this evil ruler of latveria and he's yeah. hell bent on ruling the world and yeah. destroying things. And he hates Reed Richards and he loves Sue Storm. Right. And, you know, this is just a totally different spin on it. And he's just, uh, he's been betrayed by them, so or so he thinks. It might have been totally out of their control or anything. But I think that they're, they actually may not, uh, they, they might not be striking out on Doctor Doom the way I thought they were going to be. Okay. I mean, it would make a little bit more sense if that was his thing, if he was like a journalist you know, going along as like embedded, you know, like they're like they have them embedded with military units, that kind of thing. So right. exactly. I mean, that would make a little bit more sense because before it was just thrown out there. Oh, yeah, he's just a blogger. Right. Yeah. It's a different uh, kind of villain. He's going to be, you know, a voice or something like that. But if they're doing it the way that it seems to be that they're doing, because if he is a blogger, right, then how the heck does he end up in the way that he is in accordance to this trailer? Right. So that's the trick. And I mean, I think they just did a crappy job of of selling that the first time around. Well, and they did a whole mess of reshoots too. So you have to think about that. Yeah. So maybe they corrected the problem. Then. Maybe, 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 I mean, maybe they're listening to the fans, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But I mean, 
I'm still not 100% sold on it. I mean, the... No, the, I'm not 100% sold on it, but I'm, I am definitely more interested in it than yeah, I thought it was. I am too. This so. new trailer has interested me. I am kind of... My curiosity is now peaked. It's going to be totally different for you and I going to see it because, like I said, we're not used to the... You know, I never got into the Ultimates as I didn't as read much goes. of the... I mean, the only Ultimate... I mean, I read a lot of the, a lot of the starting of the Spider-Man, Ultimate Spider-Man. Yeah, I did that one too. You know, but I didn't read a lot of the other ones. I didn't read Captain America. I didn't no. read Avengers. I didn't, you know. I didn't read Ultimate X-Men. Or the X-Men Ultimates or, or whatever like they called them. Uh, uh, yeah, I didn't really read all of those. I stuck stuck with Spider-Man and that was pretty much it. So, uh, but yeah, this has got my interest. I'm kind of, kind of looking forward to it just to kind of see what it's going to be like. I, You know, but then again, I'm not overly optimistic Yeah, because it's not, well, I don't want my expectations to be too high. Right, exactly. Because, I mean, this is not a Marvel movie per se. I right. mean, it's Marvel characters, but it's definitely 20th but Century Fox. It's like I've been saying all along, in Simon Kinberg, I trust. He ha- he he did a pretty decent job of trying to put the p- pieces back together right. with X-Men Days of Future Past. Right. And I think that leads us into our next subject matter, which is Star Wars Rebels, which he has yes. been a huge influence on. Oh, yeah. I mean, and... You know, if you tuned in for the first season of Star Wars Rebels, it started out a little slow and it was geared more towards children. But yeah. as it went on, yeah, probably, it started to get that Clone Wars feel. Probably by about, I would say, episode six or seven yeah. is when the twist happened. Well, and if you're a fan of the Clone Wars, you're really going to be a fan of oh, season yes. two. Oh, God, yes. Because it's all started. They're starting to tie it together. And if you yeah. haven't seen the Star Wars uh, Rebels season two trailer... You need You're to missing out. You've really got to watch this because there's a lot going on in there. You've got, uh, I mean, you've, I mean, number one, the big thing that we saw was Darth Vader. Yeah. Vader and the Emperor right. are are going to be a big part of season two again. Yeah. Um, we saw even Vader. Bi- and an even bigger part, yeah. too. Yeah. And James Earl Jones, it looks like it's been confirmed, James Earl Jones has, at least for a couple episodes, is doing the voice of Vader again. Right. For season two. And Sarah Michelle Geller is on as a voice too. We just don't know who don't she know is playing who. yet. The speculation is that she is one of the new Inquisitors that we see. Because we see two Inquisitors okay. in the uh, in the trailer. Now, a male and a female. Now, here's the thing. The female one, there's a lot of speculation as to who this female Inquisitor is. Right. We don't see her face. All we see is a mask. Mm-hmm. So the prevailing theories are... It's either Ventress. Oh my God, that would be crazy. Or Barris Ophi. Well, why would it be Ven- Why would they just not bring back the person who did Ventress's voice to play Ventress, though? Exactly. That's the thing. Because they had no problem bringing back uh, the person who played Ashoka. So, yeah. Uh, you know, I, I don't think that they would. I, I don't think it's that. But one thing that we've also said, too, is like, what if she's voicing like a young Leia? There's that as well. That but it wouldn't be rumor. that it wouldn't be that young of a Leia. It's only set a few years before the events of a new right. Role. So Leia would be and same age as as uh, Luke would be. So around nineteen, twenty years old. Right. So, um, but yeah, I mean, I don't know. I'm, I I want to think it's Barris, but I I don't want to go with that either because number one, in the Clone Wars when Barris you know, blew up the, the, the hangar and all that. Yeah. It wasn't a complete turn to the dark side. I, I mean, there was no influence to the dark side with her. No, there so, wasn't. She you know, was just, uh, she felt the Jedi who had been deceived and was going the wrong way. And right. the war was tearing everything apart. And she just kind of snapped. And they never really, uh, concluded what happened with her. Yeah. It's the same way that they never concluded what happened with Ashoka. Yeah. So now they've brought her back in. So, you know what? That's a great theory. It might be, yeah. I mean, I'm I'm hoping. I mean, and and it would make sense because here you got Ahsoka, you got Barris, who you know they were friends, and then all of a sudden, right. you know, she does this and framed Ahsoka for the for that for that bombing and all that. Um, I mean, I could see that happening. It makes me feel like it is Barris Ophi, um, but I'm kind of hoping it's not. I'm hoping it's something else, somebody yeah. else, right? Because I want to think that you know that Barris. You know, wouldn't do that. It wouldn't be a complete turn to the dark side. But, I mean, hey, you never know. Who's to say? I mean, Ventress was a was a Padawan. Yeah, I mean, plus, right? Yeah, I mean, and 
the other, I mean, the plus the other thing that kind of makes me think it, it's kind of pushing me towards Barris is that you know in like episode two or three we find out that her master Luminara yeah is dead. You know right. she's been dead for years. Maybe the same thing kind of thing happened. She got you know she saw the transmission and you know fell into the trap, and the Inquisitor was like. You know, and she was like, oh, my God, I have nowhere else to go. My master is dead. What do I do? Yeah. Join the Inquisitors. Right. Maybe they saw her as a... Maybe they did turn her. Who right. knows? They saw her as somebody valuable. Yeah. So. so... But, I mean, that... I mean, that's one of the big things in the, in the Season 2 trailer right. for and Star like, Wars as like well. Like you were saying, too, another big thing is the more, more involvement from Darth Vader. Yep. There's going to be... She's not going to be a major player because it's still going to be focused on the same group of, right. of Rebels. Yep. But ah- Ahsoka Tano is going to be um, a very influential part of this yep. season, and yep. they're bringing a lot more back right. from the Clone Wars, which yep. is great because we loved it. We know all of you out there love the Clone Wars, yep. too. Oh, yeah. Captain Rex is back. And Yeah, that was... That, that was, was my favorite God, clone trooper. I loved that. My favorite clone trooper, Captain Rex is back. And when I Him saw, and Fives. Right. When I saw that on screen, I was like, that's awesome. So it makes me wonder, well, what happened that they didn't... That, how did they escape, right? I, I, I think I, I know. Somebody posted something. Oh. So if you look at one of the images, if you if you when they have a group of the uh, of the three, because because Co- Cody did not. Cody is the one. He right. Cody shot down right. Obi Wan. Exactly. So the speculation was so in the stills that you're seeing from the trailer, there's three clone troopers. Uh, one is Captain Rex. We know that for a fact because he identifies himself as Captain Rex. Damn Rex. Yep. The other one, based on the way he looks with the one eye and the scar, yeah, Commander Wolf. Yep, yep, yep. Okay. The third one, uh-huh. the the thinking is it's Echo. Okay. Uh, that's what they're. That's who they're thinking the three clone troopers. I mean, we know Rex, but that's who they think the other two are. Wolf is pretty much straightforward. I think that it, it's. I think it's definitely Wolf. The third one, yeah, they. It might be Echo. We can't. We don't. We don't know for sure. But if you look at the stills, when you're looking at them on their right hand side where their hairline is, you see a scar. Mm-hmm. Pretty much the same place where, if you watch season six of Clone Wars, where they did the operation to take the chip out that made the clones obey Order sixty six. Okay. So the thinking is, they you know the word got back to the rest of the clones. Hey, there's this chip here. Before Order sixty six was given, they you know they managed to get the chip taken out, and maybe some clones were able to you know. Were, able, were didn't follow Order sixty six. Well, that would be great, you know. But obviously, based on how they looked, I mean, they aged twice as fast. Yeah. They're old men. They're probably within their sixties when <coughs> back during the war they were Excuse probably me. their you know mid mid twenties or something right. like that. So there's that. Um, but that is the prevailing theory based on what we're seeing. We're seeing you know all three of them had a scar in the same spot. So. That's the thinking. The chips got removed, and that's what will. And they've been in hiding. They've been in hiding, so. right? So we don't know. You know, we don't know all the other particulars, but we know we see some clone troopers, which are different from stormtroopers. Way different. People yep. should realize that it's different from the stormtroopers. Right. And I think we've gone over it before with the whole thing where the where the Empire stopped seeing the clones as a a, a way to to populate their armies. Right. And they decided to start moving forward with right. these other, with, with uh, stormtroopers. Right. So Clone troopers good, stormtroopers bad. Right. Clones good, stormtroopers bad. Exactly. Let's make sure we know this. And if I have to repost my, my rant video explaining this again <laughs> about the whole, why, how can you have all these stormtroopers? I thought the clones were dead. Yada, 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 yada. They're not the same. They're not the same. They are not the same. And they they go over that. Like, there is some... There were some different uh, yeah. Star Wars comic books and things like that yep. that kind of explained everything that happened with the, right. with the clones. So. Right. So there there you go there. Uh, but season two trailer, looking good. Oh, yeah. I think it's looking fantastic. I hope it goes a little bit faster paced, which yep. I think it will. It looks like it, it will be a little bit faster paced. So, But another Star, Star Wars rumor mm-hmm. that I don't know if you noticed. So we've got the new Battlefront game coming out. Yeah. Have you watched the trailer for it? I have not. You might want to, because during the trailer, we see Boba Fett. Okay. That in supposedly a scene that takes place at a, a battle 
that takes place after the events of Return of the Jedi. So he, so the theory that he got out of the Sarlacc pit is correct, right? Because or something to it. Because Lucasfilm and Disney has said, you know, after they they basically got rid of the expanded universe and said, yep, no longer can, and that's not, right. you know, it's just legend, that kind of thing. Everything else from this point on is canon, video games, books, whatever. So we know that. So I mean, if that's the point, if that's the case, then unless it's like some kind of a flashback in a cutscene or something. Boba Fett is still alive. But he's also aging twice as fast. He would be not the same age as... No, he was unaltered. Oh, right. Never mind. Jango, if you remember in Sith... Oh, not Sith. uh, Clone uh, Clone Wars. uh, Attack of the Clones. Attack of the Clones. Just try and forget those three. Yeah, an unaltered. Yeah, he wanted an unaltered. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, he would be aging normally. So he would be probably in like his... uh, he wouldn't be as old as like Han Solo, right? He would probably be just he'd probably be about the same age as You think so? He'd be old he would be older. He's probably in like his sixties. If it was if it was episode seven, I mean, yeah, it'd be the sixties or seventies. Right. But I mean this video game basically takes place, you know, during the between it's taking place between um Wait, when was that? Is it taking place between no, I can't remember. Return of the Jedi and I th- it, Episode Seven? I think no, because I mean you're 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 doing Hoth and all that kind of stuff as well. So it's probably so it's probably taking place with some battles that happened uh between uh you know, Luke facing yeah. the Emperor and Vader. Right. So it's probably taking place during battles that happened at that point, which would be perfect because it's in the beginning of the movie when Boba Fett falls into the Sarlacc right. pit with everything with so, the yeah. hot, so. so so he gets I mean so obviously he gets out and that's the prevailing rumor Fett, Boba Fett is still alive which would also tie into why they would want to do a Boba Fett standalone movie which God, is I'd love to see like cool the by me after that yeah I don't care about Boba Fett leading up to that right like that's I've seen enough of that I mean we, and we've seen a little bit of that in Clone Wars yeah in the Clone Wars episode we saw you know we ended up with with or a sing and a few other yeah. bounty hunters like like Dengar. I mean, I'd like was, to see more of the bounty hunters. That would be. I think that would be kind of cool too. I'd like to see more with Cad Bane and mm. and see uh, more Dengar. Um, you know that kind of thing. I'd love to see more Cad Bane. I thought Cad he was, Bane would be awesome. I thought he was a great character. Yeah, he was fantastic. Very. Hey, you know what? Maybe, um, maybe we'll see him in Rebels because I don't believe he died. Correct? No. Uh, there, nothing shows that he did die. Uh-huh. No. And we do see um, uh, what's uh, what's that pirate's name there? The one that Jim Cummings voices. Uh, yeah, I don't uh, know his name. Why can't I remember his name now? Because he was so cool. And we see, but we see him in yeah. the season two trailer. So we, um, so you know, we've got that going for us. I mean, there's just a ton of stuff. Right. So much stuff going on. Clone troopers, and pirates, and, and Rebels, Darth Vader. Rebels season two is going to shape up yeah. to be a really good show. Yeah. No word on when it's going to be uh, when it starts up again. Uh, but we'll, it looks like a lot of it's already done, though. It looks like a lot of it's yeah. They've been working a lot on it, so they probably they probably jumped right into it after season right. one. So things we'll see. We're gonna see Ahsoka Tano is gonna be back. Yep. Captain Rex and some other clone troopers are back, yep. and they're aged, yep. and they're gonna be helping out the rebels. Yep. Our rebel friends are going to be back. Right. We could be seeing Asajj Ventress. Pos- maybe. You know, a lot of people, and I've seen that rumor online as well. Uh, Sarah Michelle Geller has joined the voice cast as an unknown, which right. I think is the big, big debate. I'm now, holding out for Leia. Why, I'm hoping that it's not something lame. You know what I mean? So, I'm, but I'm hoping it's Leia. And then, you know, obviously we're going to see more involvement by Darth Vader, who yep. has been set up to kind of uh, follow these rebels and, and try and bring them right. down. Yeah. And uh, for those of you like myself that are up to date on the Vader comic book that Marvel has put out too, it's really interesting to see uh, he's m- more of like that Emperor Lackey Enforcer figure. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just like how Darth Maul was in Episode One, he's out. He's uh, trying to, uh, you know, he's he's trying to get rid of people that are posing a problem and everything. It's yeah. not, you know, there's one Sith in charge, and then there's one Sith is kind of like the muscle. And right. That's what Vader is right now. Yep. So. And now, have you read the uh, the other Star Wars comic that just started up? Uh, uh, I Kanan, have. the last Padawan. I have not. I have, I have not, not either. But it. I mean, I've seen the I've seen the uh, the previews uh, online, and it looks really good. So I think I'm going to have to get in on that as well. And I should be reading the Vader ones. 
I really should. The Vader ones are pretty good so far. Yeah. I like them. And they came and they they've been added to Marvel Ultimate now, so you can uh, is oh, it our okay. ultimate, so you can get all the comics. Uh yeah, for I think it's like ten bucks a month. You yeah, have so it's access kinda like, to like their whole library. Yeah, ne- so. Netflix for Marvel, you know. Right, exactly. AKA Marvel stuff. So yeah, um, but yeah, if anybody else has got got any opinion on that, you know, you know where to find us. XShockAlbanyNY dot com. You can uh, you can message us uh, obviously on uh, Twitter. Yep. Um, and you know Facebook, our Facebook page, all of that. So, um. But one, uh, we got one, one last thing we wanted to talk about. Yep. Which kind of, and this, and, and this surprised me too. I really didn't know about it until like a week ahead of time. Yeah. It just kind of flew under the radar. But we, I mean, we've talked a little bit about Albany Comic Con here and there. I yeah. think in our shows. Yeah. Oh yeah. And, and you know, and it's even, not, and even on Facebook, it's not as big as like a traditional comic con, but it's a right. great local one for right. where we are. It's more, it's more like the comic book shows. It's more like the comic book show that I went to when I was a kid in New York City. It wasn't all the big, you know, you didn't have all the big television shows and studios and, right. and movies and all that. It wasn't like Comic-Con in San Diego no, or New York. Nothing like it. Nothing like it. It focused more on the artists, the writers, the, the you know, the, the, the comic books themselves, independents, that kind of thing. Yeah. So uh, that's Albany Comic-Con. Come to find out, now there's another one that just happened this past Saturday, yeah. the 25th. Um, I couldn't go to it, even though I had plenty of warning because I had to go to my, you know, had to, we had to, we scheduled the baby shower. You know? <laughs> so I could not go, you know, life, Rich. life happens. So, but it's called, I did, and I didn't even know about it. Yeah. So, so it, this flew under the radar. So it's called chase con. Uh, it's, it was in Saratoga Springs. Yep. And, uh, I've got the page up here. Chase con 2015. Uh, I'm hoping that this goes, you know, next year, because I'd love to go. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, the big stars that they had at this Comic-Con was Brutus the Barber Beefcake from okay. WWF Wrestling. Okay. Um, do you remember watching him? I, I do, I do. There's flashes of Brutus the Barber Beefcake. Because, I, I, I mean, when I'm obviously a little bit older than you, I remember back in the 80s watching him and Hulk Hogan yeah. and Jake the Snake and, and, and Rowdy, you know, Rowdy Roddy Piper and all them wrestle. So that would have been pretty cool to go to go meet him. Absolutely. And I'm I'm betting Scotty Blaine would have had fun if he Yeah. You know, if you know he got to go to But the other one, this uh they this she was a last minute ad and because uh because, you know, we're friends on Facebook, uh, is how I found out about it. She posted it. I follow her on Facebook and Instagram. She posted it and I was like, Oh, cool. Um, so it's Nikki Klein. If you don't know the name, Nikki uh played Callie on the reboot of Battlestar Galactica on sci-fi. Yep. Uh, so she, um, you know, she was, she, and she was good in that. She was a, a great, and she was also in uh, John Tucker Must Die. Okay. Uh, which was a really good movie. I think we actually still, I think my wife and I still have the DVD of that. But that was kind of, you know, I didn't even know this thing existed until she talked about it. And I'm looking through some of the stuff. I mean, this is like really comic book kind of stuff or just you know they had kit from knight rider there <laughs> you know they had a, I guess the a car i don't know if it's the original but you know you got to take your you know you got to have your picture taken um uh, erica uh schroeder who's a voice actor she's done a lot of uh like uh joe versus joe gi joe sigma Yu-Gi-Oh, pokemon some sonic yep. hedgehog cartoons and a bunch of artists uh mark mckenna paul abrams kevin conrad uh, Victor Castro, Michael Oppenheimer, Bill Anderson, and a lot of these guys. I mean, they've worked on. I mean, Richard Box, who, who looks like he's actually done some uh, work for Marvel with like Deadpool. It looks like Young yeah. Justice, Emperor Joker, Superman Y two K, uh, Paul Harding, Jay Moore's, uh, Richard Clark, uh, John Hebert, Miggy Jagger. Who this is kind of interesting. That kind of threw us off. She's a like a famous cosplayer. Yeah. I didn't know that was a thing. No. I mean, I knew people did it, and I knew that it was getting more popular, but I didn't know people were gaining fame from it, so that's pretty cool. Yeah, that was that was kind of cool. Uh, and then there's uh, Ruby... I, I can't... I, Ruby Rosenko? Yeah. I have no clue. Uh, was, Gen- seems to be like a lot of famous Yeah, Jennifer there. Rose, Negative Stacy. Now, Ruby... There's a picture of Ruby that just popped up. It's flashing through all those costumes. Who's dressed as Ace Freely from Kiss? <laughs> What the hey and 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 Adam West from Batman? What the I mean, that's weird. 
Uh, uh, Tico Flores Kyle, who is a uh, stuntman and actor. He's done commercials. Uh, he was on, he was in Gotham. Really? That's cool. Uh, Coach Moses, Catherine's on. All I can't of, believe we missed this. Yeah. Coach, now, Coach Moses, he's a foil and saber coach, so he teaches you how to fence okay. and fight with a lightsaber. <laughs> that's you get into that profession? I don't know. I mean, that, but that's kind of cool. This And this all happened last weekend, the 25th, in Saratoga. Right. So we could have been there. We could have been there if I, you know, if we had a little bit more. Right. But we're going to, I'm going to follow we'll, these we'll, guys. We'll figure it out for next year. Yeah. And this is, and that's kind of nice that the fact that they actually had it on a Saturday. Cause right. Last couple of Albany Comic Cons and Fanticon were like on Sundays. So, and if, if there's any like uh, you know local kind of like expos or conventions that is within this realm of geek, you know we would love to be there. So if you're a listener and you know of one or you're part of setting one up, like right. let us know um, because we'd love to be able to go there. You know, possibly record a show um, or even just like explore and, and help you promote and, and get content and everything right. like that for, for something like this. We, we would love to be, uh, something that could be a part of that. So, yeah. you know, get in contact with us. You can find us at xjockalbanyny.com. You can hook up with us on Twitter and Facebook. Just look for xjockalbanyny. Yeah. We'll come up with something to help, help you out with that. Absolutely. So, um, but yeah, I mean, I don't know. Do you have anything? No, I think that's it. I think that's pretty much it. I think that we've summed everything up. Okay. So, I mean, like uh, BJ was saying, if you want to get in touch with us, xjockalbanyny.com. Uh, you can also, you know, find us on iTunes, TuneIn, yep. Stitcher, Podcastpedia, Blueberry. Um, I mean, you name it, we're out there. Right. And if you already subscribed, thank you. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, and please let us know what you think of the show. Uh, Stitcher and iTunes, please leave your comments. Let us know. Or even go to our website, xjockalbanyny.com. Go to the uh, the episode post and let us know uh, what you think uh, right in the comments. We're always glad to hear it. And if you want to email us, uh, bj at xjockalbanyny.com and bigrich at xjockalbanyny.com. So that's it. That's all. That's episode 16. Stay in a geeky, nutshell. friends. Stay geeky. We'll talk to you next week. up in the crotch a little bit too.